In today's video, I'll be painting a noble knight on his mighty white steed, or a ghoul on a bat, depending on your point of view, one of the new Morbeck knights from the Flesh Eater Quartz range. Hey guys, I'm Zoltan and you're watching Phalanx Miniatures. When I saw this model, I immediately knew that I had to paint it, but I had a very different image in my head from the box art. In my mind, this model is Sir Laszlo the noble knight, who is riding his faithful warhorse Valiant into battle, brandishing the flag of his noble king, and making every damsel in distress go weak in the knee when they see him. And whether from fear or from manliness is debatable, but the result is the same. So if you're interested in my thinking process behind the color scheme and the techniques I use to paint the pale skin of the bat, I mean the horse of course, the wings, the ghoulish green skin of the rider, the small but very prominent non-metallics, and the base that adds the final color touches to pull everything together, then let's get painting and bring Sir Laszlo and Valiant to life. Instead of jumping into the painting immediately after priming, I did something that I had been doing a lot on my latest projects. I picked a color that I wanted to use for all my shadows, essentially the darkest color on the mini, and base coated the entire figure with it. I will use this color all over the mini, leaving it visible in the shadows and mixing it into most of the other colors as well, which will hopefully help me tie together the whole color scheme. And I picked dark sea blue for this because I thought it would go nicely with the skin color I had in mind for the bat, which is the biggest surface on the model. At this point I didn't really know where I wanted to go with the rest of the colors to be honest. My plan was to paint the skin of the steed and then see where I would go after. Dark sea blue is usually a safe choice for shadows if you want to paint something dark, moody and ominous. It is hard to go wrong with it. You can apply this however you want, by airbrush, by hand or by spray can, but it's important that this is not a zenithal, it should cover the whole model, especially the shadows, even on the underside of the model. Once I was done with the dark sea blue, I started on the biggest and most prominent part of the model, which in this case is the skin of the steed. And this is especially tricky because I wanted to go for something that is like a bluish white to match with what I had envisioned for the model. We might be painting an albino bat, but Sir Laszlo thinks he is riding a white warhorse, so I had to do that vision justice. Anything close to white is notoriously difficult to paint, but with some good color choices and a couple of tricks we will get something quite close to what I envisioned. The first color I'll be using is warm grey from AK Interactive and I'll mix in a generous amount of the original dark sea blue as well, something like a 50-50 mix. This will darken the warm grey down and also tie it together with the base coat. I could use black instead of the dark sea blue as well, or simply pick a darker grey color, but this method is much simpler because it needs less colors and also gives a much nicer and more cohesive result in the end, in my experience at least. I'm using a relatively large brush here as you can see, and I don't care too much about the small details at this point, I'll pick those out later. Now I'm concentrating mostly on the larger volumes, like the large muscles of the legs, the shoulders and the back, covering them almost fully but leaving the dark sea blue visible in the shadows. I apply multiple passes to achieve full coverage, but the second or the third layer I only apply in the middle of the highlights I created. I leave the first relatively transparent layer at the edges of the highlights, creating a rough transition between the dark sea blue and my highlight mix. Once I am satisfied, I add more warm grain to the mix to brighten it up further. This mix is something like 70% warm grey and 30% dark sea blue, but to be honest, I just mix them on the wet palette roughly as I need them, adding more dark sea blue if I feel I need something a bit darker, or warm grey if I need it brighter. I'm using this mix to highlight further inside the highlights I had already established, but adding some scratches and imperfections even in the original dark sea blue to connect the layers. It is also important to connect some of the muscle groups with some lines across the shadow areas. But the model is sculpted in such a clever way that if you pay attention to the details you will do this naturally, for example by highlighting the little wrinkles connecting the large muscles on the forelegs and the thighs. If there are harsh shadows between the muscles with no connections, the skin will look more like armor than flesh. As the next step I stop adding dark sea blue and switch to pure warm grey and at this point you might think that this looks very harsh compared to the previous layer but that is okay, I'll fix that later, now I just want to go higher in brightness. I'm also starting to focus on the smaller details like the folds of the skin, the smaller muscles, the ribs and so forth, instead of just the main highlights on top of the volumes, but I'm still using the same brush to make things go a bit faster. 
Next, I mix in some grimy gray into the warm gray to brighten it up even more. I use this more selectively, mostly where I want the light to be the brightest on the model. I decided that the light should be shining from the top and the right, so the front right of the model should get the most highlights. The surface I'm highlighting is much smaller at this point, and I'm highlighting all the little details around the skin as well, so I decided to switch to a smaller brush, a 00 from Rosemary & Co, although these brushes are slightly larger than the number indicates, so this is more like a 0 from other brands. Finally, I switch to pure grimy grey and use it only on the most prominent highlights and details, mostly on the front of the model where the light hits. At this stage, the end result looks a bit rough and obviously it lacks color since I use mostly desaturated grey tones. I'll fix that later, but before moving on, I wanted to smoothen out the transitions at least partially and give it some depth. So I loaded some very diluted dark sea blue into the airbrush and slowly, layer by layer, I applied it into the shadows of the skin, focusing on the transitions between the original dark sea blue and the brighter colors. This darkened down the skin ever so slightly and smoothed out some of the transitions as well. Later I'll come back with some more colors to make the skin more interesting, but for now it is fine as it is. And looking at the end result, you might be thinking that this is almost too white, but that is only because it is surrounded by dark colors only, which makes it look brighter in comparison. As I start adding more bright colors later on, pay attention to how the skin will become less and less bright without me changing it in any way. Once I was more or less done with the skin, I decided to work more on the bed, uh, I mean the horse, so I moved on to the wings. And why does a warhorse have wings, you might ask? Well, maybe Sir Lancelot is such a valiant knight that he is riding a pegasus into battle. Who knows? With the amount of bone elements on the model, including the wings, I decided to be economical, or you could call it slightly lazy as well, and give them the same base color, but then differentiate them with the highlights. So I took some burnt umber, mixed in some dark sea blue as usual, and started covering mostly everything, including not just the wings, but also the skulls, the skeletons, the claws, and everything that is made out of bone. Later I switched to pure burnt umber as I was progressing with the highlights. These elements are all nicely sculpted on the figure, so all I needed was to follow these with the brush, applying little pressure where I only wanted to have a hint of color and applying more pressure where I wanted proper highlights. I was also following some simple rules, like highlighting more towards the tip on the wings and less at the base. Once done, I added some ivory into the burnt umber to go further up in brightness and to desaturate the bones even more. I concentrated on the most prominent highlights with this, like the ridges and edges facing the light and the tips of the wings. I added more and more ivory as I was moving along, finishing at almost pure ivory with the highest highlights. And as you probably noticed, I didn't add any highlights to the bone elements that were not part of the bed. I wanted to differentiate the materials of these, so instead of highlighting with the burnt umber, I switched to green-brown. This color is much more saturated than burnt umber because it has a lot of yellow in it, so even as I add ivory to brighten it up, it produces a much more colorful end result that looks like old yellowed bone. The process is the same as with the wings otherwise. At this point I was already itching to put some proper color onto the mini, so for the skin membranes between the wings and for the ears I decided to go with red. Red is the perfect color to contrast with the whitish skin on the steed and it felt like an easy choice for the wings. I also considered a more natural skin color, but since there is a lot of flayed skin on the rider and especially the banner, I wanted to leave that color for those elements. I took some burnt red for this and probably unsurprisingly darkened it down with dark sea blue. Originally I had my eyes on a colder bluish red, but decided that the warmer red would contrast better with the cold skin. Then it was only a matter of the usual highlighting process with some small differences. I only added a little bit of ivory in the last step for the final highlights, which I applied only on the uppermost folds of the skin. 
The reason for this is that I wanted to keep the warm red tone and didn't want to let it go into pink too much, which would have happened if I added too much ivory. Before moving on to the rider, I wanted to add some more detail onto the steed. For Valiant's fierce eyes, I wanted to have a very punchy orange that would have a stark contrast with the rest of the skin around it. This is super easy to do, I simply painted the eyeball white with ivory and left the rest of the eye socket dark around it. Then I took some fluorescent orange and applied it on the whole eye in multiple layers. Once everything was covered, I painted the middle of the eye white again to create a pupil. Eventually I applied a thin layer of fluorescent orange on this as well, since it stood out a bit too much for my liking, but I am still not sure if that was the right move. Then I also felt that I needed a bit more color and some visual interest on the wings, so I thinned down some Nasdaq yellow contrast and applied it as a wash on the base of the wings, feathering it out in the middle to create a rough transition. Alright, the seed was already getting there with most of the colors on it, so it was time to move on to the other elements around it, so let's turn our attention to our noble Sir Laszlo. Here I had a difficult choice to make. I already knew that the steed will be a very cold pale color, so I needed to make the rider contrast with that. And initially I had the idea to paint him with a pinkish skin color, like Bugman's Glow for example, but that would have made him similar to the flayed skin around him. So I made a bold choice and decided to go with green with yellow highlights. This will look super saturated and will contrast nicely with the bluish white of the bat. Does it make him look like a bit like an orc? Probably, but that is actually a plus in my book. My color of choice for this was interior yellow-green, which is the perfect combo of saturated yellow and green. As usual, I started out by adding dark sea blue to darken it down and tie it together with everything else. Then I highlighted with the same processes I used for the bat's skin, going all the way up to pure interior yellow, switching to a smaller brush for the last highlights and the smaller elements. Once I was done I decided to do some smoothing with the airbrush and while I was already at it I could do the same for the other colors as well, especially the skin of the steed. This is usually a very easy process as far as the airbrush goes. There is not much that can go wrong since I'm using extremely diluted paint so even if it goes where it shouldn't it's easy to wipe away and even if it dries a single layer won't make much of a difference. That being said, I was trying out a new airbrush for the first time here and the difference between that and my usual Infinity CR Plus made me struggle a bit more than I should have. In the end it just took me a bit longer than expected to finish this stage, around like 30-40 minutes for the entire process as opposed to that 20 that I thought I needed. First I shot some extremely diluted lemon yellow, smoothing out the skin on the rider. Then I loaded some pale sand and did the same with the skin of the bat. I chose this color because I felt that a little bit of warmth was needed, since the skin was so completely cold. I followed that up with some tiny amounts of ivory, once again super diluted, only focusing on the highest highlights on the right shoulder and face. Finally, I wanted to use some purple in the shadows of the rider to contrast with the yellow on the highlights. First I tried Magos purple contrast, but didn't like it too much, so I switched to diluted royal purple from Vallejo, which did the trick. And since I was at it, I used the same purple on the skin of the bat as well, focusing on some of the deeper shadows. More color is always better, so why And not? with that it was time to turn our attention to the flayed skin around the rider and this huge flayed skin banner that he was carrying. This is quite a big and prominent element, so it was important to get it right. I started by covering most of the surface except the deepest shadows with wine red. The intention here is to give the skin a raw and bloody look. Since I was painting red over black, this required multiple layers, but I could also use this to my advantage since it makes it easier to create the transition between the dark sea blue and the red by focusing my subsequent layers more and more towards the middle of the highlight and leaving the first ones slightly transparent. Once I was satisfied with this, I switched to Bugman's Glow from Citadel and covered most of the red in a similar fashion. I started adding ivory to the Bugman's Glow to brighten it up, focusing more and more on the upper part of the folds and the edges with the brighter color. I also used the brighter highlights to create lots of scratches and imperfections in the previous colors, which makes the end result look rougher and more worn, but also helps to hide some of the transitions. I was okay with the result at this point, but I'll come back later to smooth it a bit and to add some grim dark into it with a cool effect in the end. 
There was one more very prominent element on the rider that I still had to fill in and that was the metal elements on his spear, helmet and shield. First my idea was that I would paint everything the same with some still non-metallic metal, so I started out with that in mind. I used a single color, anthracite grey, to do this with adding more and more ivory to it as I went up in highlights and I just followed a couple of simple rules while doing it. The light was coming from the right and from the top and the metal surfaces needed to reflect that, literally. The highest highlights on the steel needed to be brighter than any of the other elements on the model, like for example the skin of the bat. And I needed to create a strong contrast between the darkest shadows and the highest highlights on the steel to make it believable. I wanted the steel to look worn and rusty as well, so for now I just created a lot of scratches everywhere, especially on the shield. I would take care of the rust later. Quite early on I realized that I'm not happy with just having steel, I wanted to have more variety there and of course a chance to add even more color. So I decided to make some of the trim bronze instead of steel. I used the same method as for the steel, but switched to some of my favorite saturated bronze colors, dark, medium and light rust, with ivory as the final highlight. I also used the same colors to add some rust effects onto the steel, some randomly, but mostly around the base of the rivets and sculpted notches. I was almost done with Laszlo and Valiant, but I still had to paint the fur on their backs, and this I also saw as an opportunity to add even more color. Initially I planned to simply leave the fur black with some grey highlights, but that seemed like a pretty dull choice compared to the rest of the model. Instead I decided to lean more into the bluish tones of the skin and make the hairs blue with some blue-green shadows. So I started out with staggered and scale green from Citadel covering most of the surface of the fur. Then I switched to turquoise, which might look like it's way too harsh, but as I add more highlights it will blend in way more than you might think. And to that end I mixed in some pastel blue into the turquoise, focusing the highlights more and more towards the tip and top edges of the hairs. And then I did the same with pure pastel blue, but on an even smaller surface. Finally, I gave the whole thing a diluted wash of staggered and scale green to tie it together. And aside from a couple of final touches, the model itself was done, but I still had the base to do. Normally I wouldn't talk too much about the base, but here it is quite important actually. At the moment the model is quite cold in the middle, with the blue-white skin of the bed being quite prominent and the rider and the flag are warmer on the top. Taking this into consideration I needed to find a good color for the base to properly frame our noble knight and his ride. So first I dry brushed the whole base with whole red, and whole red is a bit like dark sea blue in that it is great to create a nice moody atmosphere but on the warmer end of the spectrum. Then I started adding golden brown to the whole red, brightening it up but keeping it warm and dry brush this mix closer and closer to the model, adding more and more golden brown to the mix until I reached a pure golden brown. I even added a tiny bit of ivory in the end, directly around the model. The idea was that the model should look like it is standing in the spotlight without making it too obvious. Now we had the cold middle of the model surrounded by some warm colors on the top and on the bottom, so objective achieved. With that done, the only element left to do was the ruined castle wall the bat is standing on. Once again, I could have gone with simple grey highlights, but what is the fun in that, so I picked German field grey instead and sketched some rough highlights on the stones, mostly just doing some edge highlighting and a couple of scratchy highlights. Then I took some diluted hull red in the airbrush and sprayed it at the base of the wall where it was meeting the ground and up until the middle of the wall, tying the two elements together and at the same time smoothing some of the rough transitions I did with the field grey. And since I already had the hull red in the airbrush, I also used it in the shadows of the flag, smoothing the transitions and adding some more depth and color in the shadows. I also added some in the shadows of the steel non-metallic metal, making it look darker and more corroded. And finally, I also added a bit into the deepest shadows of the bat, since more color is always better and to tie it together better with the base. There was still one thing missing though, a bit of blood splatter. So I took some glistening blood, a technical paint from Army Painter, put some on an old brush and then blasted it with some air from the airbrush. This is probably the easiest way to get some properly random splatters on the model, you just have to be careful not to overdo it, less is usually more when it comes to this. And with that Sir Laszlo and Valiant were ready to ride into battle and this is how they look. <laughs> 
you very much for watching. Let me know if you like the end result in the comments. And as usual, please consider giving the video a like and subscribe. See you in the next one.